I hope so well. Thank you for your participation and comments. I got a lot of comments on YouTube and my last few podcasts. So I love hearing from you all. And today I want to talk a little bit more about relationships, whether you're getting ready to start a relationship or thinking about it, <laughs> or, or if you are in a current one and you'd like to tweak some things. Right? This podcast is for you. So I've entitled it, I've entitled it Get Ready for That Relationship. That, not <laughs> a new one or not uh, your current one, just that. So it's all encompassing. All right. So in getting ready for relationships, I've heard two pieces of advice that I'm not sure I necessarily agree with anymore. So the first one is don't jump into a relationship until you work on yourself. Don't even think about entering into a relationship until you're completely healed. Okay, so I get the whole work on self thing. I'm right there with you. Um, I don't want you jumping to get into any relationships, especially if you have experienced some abuse or if there's like, some real things that need adjusting um, before you contribute to a relationship. I'm all about that. However, do we grow? Do we learn? Do we change by just being ourselves and working on ourselves with being on with ourselves? <laughs> I think I confused myself there. But basically, do you grow, do you adjust by being alone? I'm sorry, but you don't really. Now, I get you can do some like profound soul searching, some thought work. Like I said, maybe there was some abuse, so it'd be good to heal, get some counseling, take some time for yourself. But in a general sense, I don't think you need to do the whole eat, pray, love experience before gaining a relationship. And if you think about it, for those of us in current relationships, there are probably plenty of things you need to heal from individually, but it's very difficult for the married person to say, hey, I need to find myself for a while and heal. Let's break up for a bit. And then, then when I'm all healed up, we can reconvene. <laughs> Some of you who've had experience with major trauma or betrayal, might be thinking this would be a good idea, but we don't have this convenience. And I think that there's many reasons for this. Um, and one of them is that relationships are just one of the best places we can learn and grow the most. And so going back to my single friends, I've talked about before that it's up to you. And if you do get into a relationship, be honest about where you're at or if you're just dating. Nobody said you had to commit right away. You can be honest and say, hey, I'm just dating and love to get to know you and, and start this fresh. I'm newly out of a, a long-term relationship or whatever, whatever it might be, okay? So basically, if we waited until we were healed from past relationships, then we'd never date again. <laughs> we'd probably never date again. Okay, the second piece of advice that I hear um, right after breakups and then entering, you know, the dating world is it's all about choosing your next mate. Well, I'm very worried. I chose this buzzkill. <laughs> you know, I'm worried about my ability to choose the next person or even not that. There's just so much worry and care that goes into the list of exactly who you allow to enter your life. Oh, I've got my list and this time, make no mistake, I won't be making mistakes. And yes, we need to share some common values and have some shared ideas of goals in life. I mean, there is things that go into it, but when our focus is too much on who we will find, we forget about who we're bringing to the table ourselves. We forget about the most important player in change. So instead of being so worried about finding the right person, be the right person. And this applies to those in current relationships. 
stop worrying whether or not you're with the right person <laughs> or kicking yourself for choosing this dud that isn't doing what you want one day or the next or whatever and just be the right person show up what are you bringing to the table we focus so much on what we're lacking in a relationship we focused on the other so much that we rarely focus on what we are giving another question while you're in um, a current relationship or getting into relationships is do we need to shift gears so I'm convinced that the quality of our life equals the quality of the emotions we most experience in our life. And our emotions are so, so, so affected by our physical state, our energy. So I'm going to ask you, what gear is in your current relationship? Are you running in first gear in your marriage? How's your energy level? Is that kind of what you're used to? Because our patterns of emotions, we just go back to what we're used to. We go back to the pattern. So if we continue to do the same things, our low energy, our first gear, then that's what we'll get out of it, plain and simple. So do you need to rev that up a bit? Do you need to put some energy into your relationship or into dating or into the person you are? Do you need to put some more energy in there? Think about what you want to be, who you want to influence, how you are around your kids. How do we find the energy? Well, that answer is in you. I believe that our energy <laughs> and being tired is actually an emotion and we can flip it. Okay. That will be in the next podcast. So again, I know it's hard out there getting used to dating again or it's even hard when you're in a relationship but I know that when we work on ourselves and shift our energy a little bit maybe you need to go out for a sprint <laughs> change your physical state drastically so you can do something different in your relationship and see the change I know it can work we just have to do it okay I believe in you. I love you guys. I hope you have an amazing week. Until next time. Bye.